the global mentor coach and I'm back with another great video and today I'm talking about something that's really near and dear to my heart well everything I talk about is near and dear to my heart but <laughs> this one today I'm especially passionate about because I don't believe you can live or anybody can live their best life now perpetrating a fraud it's just not possible you're keeping up a facade and for what you're still probably miserable so I really believe it's time to uncover those layers, take off those masks, and get to the heart of who you really are. So today I'm talking about identity crisis. And so let's keep it simple. What is an identity? You know, an identity is a reflection of who you are as a person. It's everything that makes you you. So if you're busy perpetrating something that you are not, picking up a little bit of something over here from this person and this over here and putting together these ingredients that make up all of these different people to try to make up who you are, you are really perpetrating a fraud. You're doing yourself an injustice because... It, 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 you rob not only yourself, but everybody of who you were designed to be and who you were designed to be has something to contribute to this world. And if you're pulling from this here and this here and this here, creating a recipe of the perfect person, you're probably still missing the mark. You probably have a little bit too much of this over here and too much of this over here and you're ruining your recipe. I don't know why it's so hard for people to be themselves, but it is. Um, I mean, we have a lot of people out here that are hijacking <laughs> other people's lives all in an effort to be someone or something they are not. So let's get into this whole premise of identity theft. Because I think this is a huge part of why people have such a hard time identifying who they are as a person and really walking in their truth, really being who they are. Because if you don't, if you don't know who you are and really get in touch with who you are, you cannot live your best life now. You're living somebody else's life and you're still dying on the inside. And that's no way to live. So now, um, I think, you know, we kind of know that identity theft is one of those situations where someone steals somebody else's identity um, for their own personal gain. You know, people have been taking other people's identity for years. I mean, they've been using old social security numbers and people's credit history to create false identities for years. You know, um, there are all different types of identity theft scenarios. The one, um, again, that I'm most passionate about is the one that happens on the individual level. And so as people, um, we're kind of creatures of habit at times. You know, even when we shake up our routine, we still go back to that, you know, one thing, that little habit, that one thing that we always do. And, um, you know, as people... You know, every single one of us, we have our little nuances. You know, we have these different patterns of behaviors, you know, character differences. You know, we walk differently. You know, we talk differently. Uh, we even smile differently. <laughs> uh, we all have differences. Uh, some people, however, take on, like I said, other people's personas, you know, we, you know, we take up a little bit here, you know, you may start walking one way and you're around this person, you're like, hey, I really kind of like how they walk. And you start walking like this person, oh, you know, I kind of like the way they dress. I like that kind of style. So let me start, you know, maybe, let me see how that looks on me. And, you know, we just, we start doing these little things. And sometimes it's all that starts with just a little bit of something, um, you know, but when you do, you're committing identity theft. You know, you spend, there are people who spend their entire lives mimicking other people and that they pick up so much of other people trying to create this persona. And it's like, how can that be healthy? You've got to be weighed down. You know, it, it's got to be a lot to dress like somebody else 
to walk and talk like somebody else, to sit like somebody else, to pattern your speech, your language, your attitude after somebody else. I mean, I think there are some people who, if it was possible, they would literally live somebody else's life. Meaning if they could jump into that person's body and just wear their, just literally be in that person's skin, they would. Because they do everything within their reach to be like this other person to the point that for some it becomes an, an obsession. That's not healthy. That's not good for anybody, especially yourself. Um, for some people, it's a matter of living for other people. People live vicariously through other people's lives. Um, every decision made is about other people. And there's nothing wrong with considering other people in your decisions, but when it becomes a situation where you're putting yourself aside to make other people feel good or that you think, oh, this decision is going to be what they think I should be doing, that's not good. You know? Um, you also don't want to think like other people. Because when you start thinking like other people, your thoughts, everything about your mind becomes fragmented. That's, that's another level of obsession. You're not only mimicking what you see on the outside, now you're taking on the person, the mind of this person and you don't really know everything that's floating around in there. We have to remember that everything about life and what we encounter with a, with a person is a sound bite, a brief moment in time and passing with that person. And you can have several different encounters and they all be different. And yeah, there's this one layer of truth. There's this one layer of something that's consistent, but that's still only a, a fragment, a part, a small part of that person. And so I think that um, you know, it's really dangerous when you start to try to think like somebody else, because now this other person's identity, who they are, what makes them them, that's now being eclipsed. You know, you're overshadowing that by this persona that you've taken on. So everything about you that makes you, you is gone. And in truth, everything that you think makes this other person who they are is eclipsed by this figment of your imagination because now you're trying to think like them and the moment you think you know how a person thinks, they'll switch it up because you're not in that person's head. I think this is why we have so many people going through identity crisis and having midlife crisis events and, you know, all of these different things that are happening because they don't know who they are. This is what we're seeing a lot of. People just don't know who they are. They don't know who they want to be. They don't know anything. I mean, you need to grow up. You, people would always ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? And, you know, they're still trying to find their way as children, but eventually they figure it out along the way. But I think we still have grown people walking around trying to figure out who they are because they aren't satisfied with who they are on the inside because something has happened that damaged them so bad that they have low self-worth yet, low self-esteem, low, low self-value. It's, it's all gone. And then back to my other point of living for other people. You know, there are people who sacrifice their whole lives just to make other people happy. And they do it so much that they just, they lose themselves. They just sacrifice. Meh. I'll put that. Meh. No. They do what makes other people happy, what they think makes other people happy. They don't do anything that brings themselves happy or joy or peace. They don't do anything. It's all about the other person. Their, their, their whole identity is wrapped up in the people around them. Even if that means a perfect stranger. These are people who are so tied to people that they care about what a perfect stranger thinks. 
I'm not talking about having good manners and saying please and thank you and excuse me. All the, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just wrapped up in 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 trying to please so many other people that they're miserable themselves. I mean, listen. There's nothing wrong with caring and loving for people. Like, I think that it's great. You know, it's a good thing to love and care about other people. It's a good thing to be giving towards other people. It's not good. It's completely unhealthy when it's done at the expense of your identity. The very thing that makes you who you are. And some people will actually start to think you just fake. Because, and the truth is, you are. You're not being yourself. You're denying yourself. That's not what Jesus meant when he said, deny yourself and take up the cross. Okay? He didn't say live to please other people because sometimes some of the things that you have, some of the decisions you have to make is not going to please the person around you. It's, you're not always going to be, it's unrealistic to think that you can please everybody all the time because you're not. You can't be all things to everybody. And there are people who lose their identities. They lose themselves trying to be all things to everybody. And that's completely unhealthy. Self-care matters. It is not selfish. It is necessary because you can't draw from an empty well. And I can truly say this last person living for other people was me. And I was not living my best life. And to this moment, there are parts of my life that I truly regret. And people will say, oh, there's no, re there's no value in living re with regret. I agree to an extent. I think there's a healthy balance in respecting that there's a part and in acknowledging that there's a part of your life that you that you wish you could do over again. And if you could, you would make better decisions. And so it's it's the learning from those experiences that I value because now I live my best life now not to please other people, but to really truly get joy out of my own life and doing what I want and enjoy doing for me. Um, and that's not selfish. That's just really freeing yourself. And it's extremely liberating when you're no longer making decisions based on, will this person approve? And what do they think? And constantly calling other people to get their buy-in for something that's really not going to affect them in the first place. That's really a toxic way to live and think. So, you know, you may be asking, like, how do I break free from identity theft? At least, you know, on the individual level. Um, there are processes and things that um, you have to go through to prove who you are when it comes to a traditional identity theft situation. So if you're in an identity theft situation, you have to have all this documentation and you go through a whole process and it's a miserable process that can take months and even years to clear up to prove that you are who you say you are. The same process that you undergo in a traditional identity theft situation Proving, documentation, all this stuff is kind of similar what you have to undergo to discover who you really are, your true identity. The first thing you have to do is strip away everything you think you know about yourself because what you think you know about yourself, you don't really know. It's not real anyway. Okay? That's the hardest part. You have to unlearn everything you've learned. And the older you are, the harder it is. Because you want to hold on to these things. It's all you know. And so you're telling me I got to let all this go and launch into the deep end of something I don't know about? Yes. Yes. Because you're talking about stripping away maybe 30 or 40 years of something. That's going to be way harder than stripping away 5 or 10 years. But it's necessary. You've got to do it. You've got to get rid of the mask, the layers. Let's get to the heart of the matter. And that's what you have to do for yourself if you really want to find out who you really are. Peel off all of that other stuff and really just get to the matter. 
then you have to ask yourself some basic questions and and they're basic but they're necessary because it's important for you to really give these things some thought like serious 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 thought um if you don't know the answer just be honest and say i don't really know the answer to that i don't know how to answer that right now I'd rather that than you go seeking answers to the questions from other people because in other people or even on the internet, you're not being true to yourself. That's going to create, that's compounding the problem. You're going to find yourself full circle back to where you are and you're not really fixing the issue because you're now finding your identity in somebody else's answer rather than just say, I don't know the answer to that or I don't know how to answer that because this part of the journey is completely personal. This is between you and you. If you don't know, just say you don't know. Leave it blank. Come back to it later, whatever it is. But the purpose of the exercise is to find out who you are. And so you've got to ask yourself simply, who am I? And this is not a question that you're expected to answer up front. Because you don't really know who you are. You know who you think you are, who this person you've created, you know, you know that, but you don't really know who you are at this point. This first question, it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of a mile marker. You know, it's, it's there because it's what you're seeking to discover, you know? And so this is an exercise where you actually work backwards to get to the answer of who am I? You're going to ask yourself, like, what do I like? What don't I like? What are my favorite colors? What kind of clothes do I like? What makes me feel good about myself? These are basic questions, but these are simple and they are necessary because many times we think the basic, simple things, we take them for granted. And we don't even realize these are the things that really make up our identity. They give us our unique presence. They, they, these are things that are really reflecting who we are. You know, you want to take time to look at yourself in the mirror and really see yourself. And ask yourself, if I were to die today, what would people say about me? Would they say I was funny? Loyal? friendly, angry, mean, fake, loving, compassionate, kind, confused. You really want to dig deep with this. You know, this question is not so much what other people think about you, but the perception that you're projecting. What do you want people to say about you? How do you want to be remembered? Another question you can ask is, um, what do I like to do for fun? Am I an introvert or an extrovert? Do I like being out and about around people all the time? Or do I like to be inside enjoying solitude? You know, I like my little quiet time at home. Am I a little bit of both? Do I like nature? What kind of nature do I like? What kind of food do I like to eat? What kind of music do I like? Am I into art and culture? Am I into video games, cartoons, and anime? And you know, you might like reading books or love to cook and bake. You know, you might just like going to sit at the park and feed the ducks. Whatever. <laughs> but the questions you ask yourself are really there to help you get to the root of who you are. You know, they're not about anybody else. But the question that will really throw you is what made me change everything I am to start thinking and behaving like everything I am not. What made me change everything I am to start thinking and behaving like everything I am not. Was it something somebody said? Was it someone else's perception of my lifestyle? Was it something I felt because of societal pressures? 
what was See, sometimes we compromise our identity to fit into um, society or because society says it's taboo. So, for instance, if you like to cook and bake, you may have felt ashamed of this because society or someone said that it was antiquated. You might be a homemaker. But you heard somebody say, girl, women don't do that no more. You must be stuck in the fist. 50. This, this ain't the stone age because people have that way of thinking. That's their perception. And you bought into that and it made you feel some type of way about wanting to be a homemaker, about wanting to stay home and cook and bake and provide for your family. But what you have to ask yourself is, for instance, why is enjoying cooking and baking antiquated? Why does it mean you have a housewife mentality? And even if you do, why is that bad? If you want to be a housewife, why is that taboo? I mean, we got a TV show talking about, you know, housewives of this and da, 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 da. So why is that bad? Why is that taboo? And then you've got to ask yourself, why was what that person said more important than what I wanted? Why did that affect me so much? Why did that hit home? Why was I vulnerable to that? See, these, these are the kinds of questions you'll have to ask yourself if you really want to get to the root of who you are and really uncovering your identity. You know, you've got to be ready and willing to accept the answers if you are really honest with yourself. Now, if you're over here lying to yourself, then guess what? You you still walking in identity theft anyway. But, you know, this this is a process that's going to require total transparency. You've got to be ready to see yourself or who you are at the basic level. And I'm talking about good, bad, and everything in between. I'm talking about what you look like when you don't have makeup on. I'm talking about what you look like when you got your circles and the bags under the eyes. I'm talking about what you look like. Like really beyond that, digging deep into what's in your soul, what's in your heart. You've got to be ready to press through and beyond all the damage that has happened to your ego. Because at the end of the day, it's a reflection of a bruised, damaged ego. And you've got to be ready to uproot all the negative thinking that you've that you've amassed throughout the years and truly embrace who you are at the core. At, at the core, you're just a child at heart. So what? There's nothing wrong with that. But if you can't be naked and transparent with yourself, you will never, ever discover who you really are. And you will not live your best life now. You will never be able to truly live your best life now if you can't be naked and transparent with yourself to really figure out who you are and why you are the way you are. And that's it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the bottom line. So I really hope I said something here in this video on identity crisis, dealing with identity theft on an individual, on a personal level has really helped you figure out how you can uncover who you really are at the core um, and just kind of peel back those layers. Those are some hard questions to answer. Um, and it's really there to make you really see yourself and dig deep because that's what it's going to require for you to really be who you are and to start living your best life now. So this is me, Dr. Ace, the Global Mentor Coach, signing off. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Um, and make sure you go ahead and like my channel down there, um, you know, and share this video. Share my channel um, with other people because I'm sure you know somebody who is uh, also struggling with their identity and trying to figure out who they are and you know and where their place is in the world a lot of times we don't really know our place in the world and the reason we don't know what our place in the world is is because we don't really know who we are as a person we haven't uncovered that because we've put on all of these different masks and personas to create something that makes that we think makes us feel good but we're really empty um, on the inside and so i really hope this video helped you again give it a thumbs up 
Make sure you like it. Make sure you share it. Follow, subscribe my channel. Recommend other people to do it as well. And um, leave me some comments. Let's talk about this. How do you feel about yourself? And where do you see yourself going? And, um, you know, let's see how I can help you live your best life now. This is me, Dr. Ace, the Global Mentor Coach, sending you lots of love and light. Until next time, ciao.